All right, looks pretty good. Hopefully it sounds as good as it looks though because I'm using a new camera. Or should I say I'm actually using a camera and not my phone for once. It's a little bit of money I'm putting back into the channel. Hopefully make things a little bit better for you. And well, now I have to welcome you to Tag Back, the show where every week we take a look at another blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present. And there isn't a whole lot of flywheel blasters out there, and let alone a lot of old flywheel blasters. There are a couple, and this happens to be one, because today we're going to be taking a look at the Nerf Balzuka MP150. This is like the only blaster that ever had the MP tag in front of it. You know, like the CS clip system, and I don't even know what IX means, and all these other weird designations that blasters have. Well, this is the MP, which I'm guessing stands for motor powered. At least that's what the Nerf Wiki says. But it's a pretty darn cool little blaster, and yes, it is a flywheel powered blaster that is absolutely gigantic very big and there's a good reason for that this thing also known as the motorized balzuka happens to hold 15 of the old school nerf foam balls and it shoots all of them it's like a semi-auto or maybe even kind of a full auto system although the entire system itself isn't all that great it is a functional cool little toy i would like to show you in action but when i got this thing from john and we took it apart at chelo's house well, the entire battery compartment is completely rusted. So this thing will not run without any some kind of rewire in some function, which is a little depressing. But at least I can kind of go over how it would function and theory craft how well this thing would work. Spoiler alerts, when it comes to the foam ball stuff, they don't work all that well. But exactly how does this thing work? Well, you will notice this lovely green slide right here that you can use to block off your ball entry chamber for whatever reason of just balls falling out was kind of a problem you slide that open and you put in five balls get used to balls because we're gonna be talking about it quite a bit here but once you filled your balls in there what do you do next well there's this little thing right here that you pull back right here and it will switch chambers and i don't know if you exactly saw that but and then it makes that very satisfying return. Seriously, that's... Oh, that's so much fun. And now you have room to pour five more balls. And then you can do it again. You have room to put five more balls. And for a total of 15 balls, that's not too bad. But this is, in fact, a flywheel-powered blaster. And you do that by hitting this switch right here on the side, which is on this very nice, comfy kind of undergrip here. You press that in. The flywheels will start revving up, and then when you pull the trigger, basically a little tiny lever thing kind of moves down and kind of kicks a ball into the flywheel, which will shoot the ball in the general direction of what you're pointing at. Problem? Balls are kind of a terrible ammunition type. They are fun, don't get me wrong. They fly okay, they bounce, they roll, they're big, so it's kind of easy to hit targets with close range, but beyond that, they're aerodynamically challenged, kind of like a fat kid, and then of course there's really no use to using them because you're only going to be the person using them on the field most likely. And also this thing is massive, it even comes with its own carry strap so you can try to sling it somewhere, although uh, it does seem like it's meant for a four year old and not somebody of my stature. Is there any pros to this blaster? Well. The grip is exceedingly comfortable, the trigger is very comfortable, the basic ergonomics of the blaster are very well done. This thing sliding back and forth, I don't know if it did that when it was brand new, but it's doing it now and that's quite annoying. And filling this thing up would probably be a little finicky, but you basically just you know, slam that back and put some balls in there, put some more in there, and then yeah, you very lazily fling balls out the front and I'm wondering how well this thing would actually work if you were to pull it back like this to try to get angled shots off of it. Looking down the barrel here there might be some kind of mechanism. It does look to be like maybe the thing in the back would slide back as it's filled up with ammo but I'm not seeing any way for it to do that. Again it's kind of a shame because balls are really hard to come by and then on top of that this thing just don't work at all. But it's cool looking, I mean, look at this thing. It's so 90s it hurts, and that's funny because it came out in like the year 2000. And, well, I like it, because I like these old kinds of things. 
Is there a practical reason to pick one up today? No. I, I don't see a single reason. The only thing would be maybe stuffing these full of Titan tanks and really over-engineering some way to fill all those tanks up and it, it wouldn't be possible is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, there's not much of a use to these things and I haven't seen a whole lot of people mod them, but apparently Chalo wants to try, so I'll most likely be handing this whole thing off to him. But I did want to do a video on it because this is kind of one of those dark pieces of Nerf's forgotten past and on the, uh, the front of it here it says, Warning, never place hand or face in or, in or near barrel. Do not place any foreign objects in barrel. Use only Nerf ammo design for this product, which it says right there on this little sticker. It's kind of one of those things where it says do not modify darts or dart blasters. They know we're going to do it. And honestly, I wonder how prevalent modifying these blasters were back in the day. Let me know what you think about the motorized Balzuka or Balzuka MP150 down in the comment boxes below. If you like this thing, if you have any more questions, I would love to try to answer them, but unfortunately this is another one of those episodes where I have something old and busted, but at least I have it so I can kind of show off and give you a vague idea of how this thing worked. And let me know how the camera worked too, because that's pretty important. I spent a lot of money on this camera and I hope it works well, and I hope it kind of improves the entire experience. If not, there's a dislike button there for you. I'm Walcom S7, thank you so much for watching this video, and of course I hope to see you in an entirely different one, or what's gonna happen is I'm probably gonna go change shirts and shoot another video, but you'll never know!